Okay, so we started about the uh, tangible non-current asset uh, previously, and we discussed about property, plant, and equipment. Uh, so just a brief, a quick a revision about this. So what is property, plant, and equipment? So it is the tangible item which is held in the production or supply of goods or services or for rental to others or for the admin purpose. So which is used in production of goods or supply of services or it is given on rent to someone other or for the admin purpose and it has expected life is more than one year or we can say it is expected to be used during more than one period then it is called property plant and equipment. Now, whenever we see any standard, uh, so it, uh, as we discussed before, it talks about three things. One is recognition criteria. Second is measurement criteria. Third is disclosure requirement and present. So this is the three things which any standard will talk about. So first of all, we need to see whether an asset is qualifying as for the definition or not so yes definition is qualified now after definition is satisfied then we need to see can we record this into our books of account so for this what we need to see we need to see the recognition criteria recognition criteria means when we can record an asset into books of account <coughs> sorry so recognition criteria means it is probable that future economic benefits will flow to entity and cost can be measured reliably. If this two criteria are satisfied, then yes, we can recognize the asset into books of account. <coughs> Initially, all the assets are recognized at cost. Subsequent expenditure, we discussed three things. <coughs> so normally, subsequent expenditure are charged to statement of profit or loss but it can be capitalized or we can say it can be added into cost of asset only in three cases. One, where the subsequent expenditure is enhancing the economic benefits provided by the asset. So this can be by say, if life of asset also can be increased or say productivity of the asset also can be increased. So anyway, both the ways, the economic benefit to the company will enhance or if it is relating to overhaul or say major inspection of the asset then this overall cost can be capitalized and the third one is in case of replacement asset uh, in replacement of a component in a complex asset so replacement cost can be capitalized but subject to the original price of the cost that is the, the replaced part cost is return of before then we discussed about the depreciation. So depreciation is generally uh, the allocation of the total cost of an asset over the useful life. It is charged into statement of profit or loss. Change in the method of depreciation is not allowed. It is allowed only in the case when it is permitted by statute or it is resulting into more fair presentation. And then we discussed about the uh, subsequent treatment. So subsequent treatment, two options are available. One is cost model, one is revaluation model. Cost model means simply cost minus accumulated depreciation. Uh, that is what we used to do. We studied so far the cost model. That is what we also can say historical cost method. And second one is the revaluation model where so every uh, whenever we uh, reporting it what we do we revalue the asset so whenever there is a say market value of the asset is different than the carrying amount so in that case we need if we are following the evaluation model so then in that case we need to remeasure the carrying amount of the asset to the fair value or market value so the difference between fair value and the carrying amount is called revaluation surplus. <coughs> this revaluation surplus is accounted into statement of other comprehensive income. 
if fair value is decreasing then loss we need to recognize immediately and that subsequent treatment we discuss accounting for revaluation also we discuss so whenever there is a revaluation we need to first of all increase the cost of asset to the revalued amount then we need to remove the existing accumulated depreciation and then the credit amount will be the other comprehensive income that is revaluation surplus whenever an asset is say revalued asset is depreciated so as we discussed now because of revaluation what is happening the value of asset is increasing now once value of asset increases so now the corresponding depreciation also will increase because of the depreciation our profit will go down so but we have revaluation surplus into our balance sheet so in case of revalued asset we have two options available one is we a company can transfer annually to the extent of additional depreciation from revaluation surplus to retained earning <coughs> or other option is do not transfer annually transfer will be done once asset is disposed disposed of or scrapped or sold whatever or use life is finished so two options are available annual transfer or do not transfer annual so that is what the basically uh, property plant and equipment is last de recognition so whenever uh, we are de recognizing asset that means de recognition means either the life of asset is over or say we are selling the asset <clears throat> so in that case uh, if net disposal proceeds minus carrying amount so say life of the asset is over and we are selling it in a scrap so whatever nominal value if we are able to realize it anything if it is higher than carrying amount then it is profit on sale of asset one additional step uh, step in the case of revalued asset what has happened in revalued asset so whenever we are selling revalued asset so we need to see is what is the balance lying into our revaluation surplus so at the time of sale or at the time of disposal any balance remaining into revaluation surplus it will be transferred to retained earning from and at the last so this is the brief about is 16 what we did in previous two sessions so any doubts any questions into is 16 anyone any questions so please ask or we can go for the new standard uh, sir yes please uh, sir uh, it is a general question uh, sir are you going to share this pdf with sorry us? sir will you please share this pdf with us this pdf i said you <laughs> this is very brief i said you try to prepare your own notes uh, that will help you i don't rely on ready made notes i don't have any issue in providing but i want you guys to at least read and prepare your own notes so that will give you practice agar maine ye de diya to fir aap nahi karoge khud se maine sir actually uh, we don't have study material it's showing out of stock study material nahi mila hai abhi tak theek hai yes uh, no problem I'll, i'll i'll check with the team और मैं मीन वाइल लाल लाल शेयर सम के लिए दोनों चीज के लिए मैं लाल लाल आस्क टीम टू शेयर सम ऑफ द मटेरियल जो जो एटलीस्ट जो हमारा क्वेश्चन स्टार्ट हुआ उसका मटेरियल आपको मिल जाएगा नो वो हो जाएगा डोंट ओके सो नाउ नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज सेकंड इज आईएस 40 दैट इज इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी नाउ वेरी सिमिलर टू आईएस 16 प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट now first of all we need to understand what is an investment property so investment property what is written in the bracket it is land or building so only land or building or land and building both together can be considered as an investment property if it is held by owner or by the lessee under the finance lease to earn rental income or for capital appreciation or for both 
so be very careful investment property means if land and building is held by the owner and the purpose of holding is either to earn rental income or to earn the capital appreciation on the same or both that means particular land and building owner is not using it for the business purpose only it is for the investment purpose property is given to someone on rent so owner is just earning rental income or it is not given on rent to anyone it is just put aside and this owner wants to get capital appreciation on the same with the passing of time or the both intention also can be there together so investment is also done so capital appreciation is one motive and with that it is given on rent also to someone so land and building held for the purpose of rental income or capital appreciation or both then it is called investment property now be very careful here is 16 what we can think that is 16 so land and building can be part of our is 16 property plant and equipment also and it can be into is 40 that is investment property as well so we need to see here what is the purpose of holding that asset if we use that asset into say our production of goods say our say a factory building is there or say our head office building our office building is there so that means that office we are utilizing for our own business purpose or say own admin purpose so then building is considered under is 16 property plant and equipment but if we say i have a cup entity is purchasing a building and simply just they are not utilizing it anyway they are just simply giving on a rent to someone so then it will be covered under is 40 then we need to apply the accounting treatment as per is 40 so land and building can be part of is 16 as well as is 40 depending upon the purpose of holding we need to decide what accounting treatment we are going to for then so definition now we see that we are clear that building is there or a land is there Uh, which is purchased only for the purpose of say investment or say capital appreciation now so that means recognition criteria is that is uh, sorry definition is as for the definition asset is qualifying to be called as investment property now again we need to see that recognition criteria so here also recognition criteria same same as per is 16 that is future economic benefits and cost can be measured rely third one is we need to see that initial recognition so as we discussed or at the time of initial recognition investment property shall be recognized at cost so same this is very similar standard with is 16 no difference see the in asset related standard there is no difference into recognition criteria no difference in initial measurement so all the asset all the asset initially recognized at cost only initially means whenever we are recording the asset for the first time into books of account it is always recognized at the cost only one exception is there that is for the agriculture product for that we have a separate standard for but just for your understanding only the agriculture produce or we say a biological asset which is covered under is 41 agriculture in that only <coughs> initial recognition is done at fair value otherwise all the asset whatever standard it is initial recognition is at always at cost fine so building we purchase in we need to recognize it into books of account so first time we need to recognize at cost now again what is included into cost so same as per is 60 that is purchase price 
all the cost <coughs> incurred till asset is put to use then so uh, if say we are constructing a building so we have say said construction is when all the cost of construction will be part of my cost so say whatever we have seen in is 16 the initial cost element will be same non refundable taxes then we need to add into cost if taxes are refundable then we need to ignore we will not put the cost into say so that is initial now that means now we first time we recognize an asset into our balance sheet that is done now what is after recognition so as we have two options available into is 16 that is property plan and equipment what was that cost model and revaluation model same way here also we have two options one is cost model and second one is fair value model see be very clear words are clearly different in both the standard in is 16 it was revaluation model in is 40 it is fair value model accounting treatment is also different for both the models in different both, both the standard so if say entity is choosing cost model so cost model is same that is cost minus depreciation so on building what entity will provide depreciation as per the useful life of the building that is normal cost minus depreciation and in that case no revaluation is permitted clearly given into investment property if entity is following cost model then entity will simply provide depreciation every year over the useful life of the asset and no revaluation is permitted at all second option entity is having fair value model so in case of fair value model what entity needs to do entity needs to remeasure the investment property at fair value every year no depreciation is provided into statement of profit or loss and any gain or loss in case of revaluation is charged to profit or loss <coughs> now see the difference here into investment property if entity is following fair value model now in fair value model every reporting date every year entity needs to see what is the fair value of asset and every year they need to remeasure the property at fair value so whatever is the carrying amount in the book so every year every say for example entity is following say january to december as an accounting period so say december 2019 fair value is checked the remeasurement is done again on december 20 what the entity need to check what is the fair value on december 20 so if there is a change into fair value again change needs to be accounted again depreciation uh, december 2022 same process needs to be followed now in case of fair value model depreciation is not provided be very careful no depreciation is provided here and any gain or loss in case of revaluation is charged to profit or loss now what is the difference between is 16 and is 40 so there it was revaluation model here it is fair value model in revaluation model it is not required to remeasure the uh, uh, property plant and equipment at fair value every year it is not required whenever there is a change in the fair value then only remeasurement is done so again i am repeating into revaluation model for property plant and equipment 
every year remeasurement is not required whenever there is a change in the fair value of an asset then only remeasurement is carried out and in that case remeasure any change that is if say value of the asset is increasing then it will be accounted as revaluation surplus and it is recorded into where statement of other comprehensive income because it is what unrealized profit is of money if value is decreasing then we straight away charge to statement of profit or loss account now what is the difference here here in case of investment property if fair value model option is selected then in that case no depreciation is provided no depreciation in case of fair value model in that case but it is mandatory that every year end entity needs to check the fair value of asset so if value is increasing then entity needs to increase the value of asset into books of account if value is decreasing then entity needs to decrease the value of asset and this any increase or decrease or say we can say any gain or loss in case of revaluation that is straight away charged to statement of profit or loss now you need to understand why why we are not charging this into other comprehensive income in is 16 we are charging it to other comprehensive income here we are charging it to profit or loss account so why so so there property plant and equipment is something which we use into our business or say in the, in the case of manufacturing or say supply of services or for the admin purpose we are utilizing that asset and we provide a depreciation on the same so any revaluation change that has come in any revaluation surplus is there so in that case we are just measuring it to fair value we are just checking it with the fair value or as we can say market value but we are not realizing anything as of now so it is considered as unrealized gain and we are recording it to statement of other comprehensive income now here in case of fair value model asset we are not utilizing in our business that means there is no charge to statement of profit or loss account no depreciation we are not debiting anything as a depreciation into books of account but it is lying as an asset into our balance sheet so every year we need to see whatever asset we have say if we have some other investment also so we check the value of investment so in investment or say investment property if there is any change in the value so that change in the value should be accounted and that should be accounted as a statement of profit or loss because we here we are not providing any depreciation because with because and with regards to this asset we are not claiming any deduction any allowances from books of accounts so if there is any change with regards to market value if change is positive that is say value is increasing then also we record it into statement of profit or loss and if we record it so if say value is decreasing then also we need to record it into statement of profit or loss because the purpose of holding in this asset is what it is to earn the capital appreciation and value of asset is increased so it is capital appreciation so record it into statement of profit or loss fine so this is investment property land and building held for the purpose of earning rental income capital appreciation or both initial measurement at cost subsequent measurement at either cost model or revaluation model cost means cost minus depreciation in that case no revaluation permitted fair value model every year remeasure the property at fair value no depreciation is provided any gain or loss to be recorded into statement of profit or loss <clears throat> 
so this is what is there about investment property now very important part the most important or we can say most uh, uh, favorite uh, sir topic yes please uh, sir ek request tha ki uh, white board use karke aap thoda uh, explain kar to sikha sakte ho kya one note kya matlab samajh pura bana ke to rakha hai chart kya explain question hoga to hum excel mein bataunga na main question karenge ठीक है ठीक ठीक है जहाँ भी लगा क्वेश्चन इसके ये एक समरी नोट्स बनाया हुआ है मेरा इट इज इन चार्ट फॉर्मेट ठीक है तो इसके बाद अब प्रैक्टिकल क्वेश्चन में जाएंगे जो बुक में दिया हुआ है तो जहाँ पर भी बुक में है जो एक्सप्लेनेशन पार्ट रहेगा जहाँ भी कैलकुलेशन लिखा है ठीक है ओके तो नाउ all students be uh, very uh, this is very important part now as we have seen that say land and building it can be part of what property plant and equipment also and it can be investment property also so now we need to understand the transfers so say an entity has a building previously that building in entity has purchased for the investment purpose and now entity wants to occupy that building and they want to use it for their own say office purpose so previously what building was it was for the capital appreciation or it was given on rent to someone else so then it was investment property but after that entity started using the asset asset using the building for their own business purpose so now purpose of holding has changed so standard is also changing so now it is covered as is 16 property plant and equipment so whenever such change is happening so how to account for this change and what value we will record the transfer so first case transfer from investment property to owner occupied property that means first of all building is previously given on rent to someone or it was kept vac vacant only only for the purpose of capital appreciation now entity wants to use that same building for the business purpose that means transfer is happening from investment property to owner occupied property owner occupied property means property plant and equipment is 60 so now at what value property will be transferred that we need to see so transfer can be both the side it is from investment property to owner occupied property or it can be from owner occupied property to investment property also so to decide at what value it will be transferred so two possible values are there one is cost sorry one is carrying amount and second is fair value so whether transfer will be done at carrying amount or fair value to decide this we need to see that what is the accounting treatment is being followed for investment property or what accounting treatment we are going to follow for investment property that means say if currently building is rented out to someone that means it is investment property so whenever whenever it is investment property so how we are accounting it at cost model or fair value model so we need to see that previously now it was owner of a property that means we are utilizing the building for our own office now entity is moving to some bigger office and that old office they are giving to someone on rent so it is a transfer from 
owner occupied property to investment property so here also we need to see at what price this transfer will happen so in this case also we need to see whenever the property will be converted into investment property what accounting treatment we are going to follow for investment property cost model or fair value model यानी कि दोनों केस में यही देखना है कि इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी के लिए क्या अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट फॉलो होगा अगर एग्जिस्टिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी है तो अभी क्या अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट फॉलो कर रहे हैं अगर कन्वर्ट होने के बाद इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी होगा तो कन्वर्ट होने के बाद इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी में क्या अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट फॉलो करेंगे अकॉर्डिंगली डिसाइड होगा कि ये जो ट्रांसफर होगा वो कॉस्ट मॉडल पे होगा या फेयर वैल्यू मॉडल पे होगा फर्स्ट केस देखते हैं फर्स्ट केस क्या लिखा है ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी टू ओनर ऑक्यूपाइड प्रॉपर्टी ठीक है मतलब अभी हमने तो फॉर एग्जांपल रेंट पे दिया हुआ है अभी हम उसको अपने बिजनेस यूज के लिए ऑक्यूपाई कर रहे हैं सो so, हमें यहाँ पे डिसाइड करना है कॉस्ट पे ट्रांसफर करे या फेयर वैल्यू पे ट्रांसफर करें सॉरी कैरिंग अमाउंट पे ट्रांसफर करे या फेयर वैल्यू पे ट्रांसफर तो so, यहाँ पे देखो अभी हम इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी के लिए यानी कि जब हमने असेट रेंट पे दिया हुआ है तो so, उस असेट का हमने अकाउंटिंग कैसे किया हुआ है कॉस्ट मॉडल पे किया हुआ है या फेयर वैल्यू मॉडल पे किया हुआ है तो so, एक ऑप्शन है कॉस्ट पे किया हुआ है तो so, जब हम इन्हें इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी कॉस्ट मॉडल पे अकाउंट किया है सो इन दैट केस असेट विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड इन टू प्रॉपर्टी ग्लैट एंड इक्विपमेंट एट Caring amount. यानी कि सिंपली से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन माई बैलेंस शीट वैल्यू ऑफ बिल्डिंग इज से टेन लैक्स एंड आई एम फॉलोइंग कॉस्ट मॉडल फॉर द सेम आई परचेज दिस बिल्डिंग फाइव ईयर्स बैक सो टिल फाइव ईयर्स आई प्रोवाइडेड डेप्रीशिएशन बिफोर फाइव ईयर्स वैल्यू इज ट्वेल्व लैक्स ट्वेल्व लैक्स टू लैक इज दी डेप्रीशिएशन फॉर फाइव ईयर्स so now in current date after 5 years existing date is uh, 12 minus 5 that is uh, sorry uh, 12 minus 2 10 lakh is the carrying amount now i want to use that building for my business purpose so at 10 lakhs only transfer will be done and will continue provide depreciation on the same so after the transfer it is now covered into which standard is 16 प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट और उसके बाद फिर वो स्टैंडर्ड में क्या बोला हुआ है सेम अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट हमें फॉलो करना पड़ेगा सो so, अगर हमने कॉस्ट मॉडल फॉलो किया है इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी में और फिर हम बिल्डिंग या लैंड को ट्रांसफर कर रहे हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी से ओनर ऑक्यूपाइड प्रॉपर्टी में तो ये ट्रांसफर होगा कैरिंग अमाउंट पे और हम उस पर डेप्रीशिएशन प्रोवाइड करेंगे कंटिन्यूसली जैसे हम पहले इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी में करते थे तो यहाँ पे बैलेंस शीट में क्या चेंज आएगा सिर्फ जो असेट है असेट पहले कौन से हेडिंग में था इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी हेड के अंडर था अभी वो इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी से निकल के प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट में आएगा अदरवाइज कोई चेंज होगा नहीं सेकेंड सिनारी सर विल यू प्लीज रिपीट दिस पार्ट वंस मोर so first see what scenario we are seeing we are transferring the asset from investment property to owner occupied property right unmute kar lo so jahan pe doubt ho raha hai mujhe batana so i need to understand okay so i'll explain slowly slowly jo bhi point samajh mein aa raha hai just confirm me theek hai so first scenario what we are seeing we are transferring an asset from investment property to owner occupied property means currently it was held for say capital appreciation or ya to kisi ko rent pe diya hua hai abhi same building hame kya karna hai hame own purpose ke liye business mein use karna hai yani ki wo kaun sa transfer ho gaya investment property to owner occupied property acha abhi ye transfer kaun si value pe hoga so in that case two options are there one is carrying amount and one is fair value तो कैरिंग वैल्यू पे कैरिंग अमाउंट पे ट्रांसफर होगा या फेयर वैल्यू पे ट्रांसफर होगा टू डिसाइड दैट 
we need to see that when the asset is classified as investment property what is the accounting model we followed cost model or fair value model so if we followed cost model then in that case transfer will be done at carrying amount carrying amount means cost minus depreciation depreciation so at carrying amount asset will be transferred and once it is transferred to property plant and equipment we continue providing depreciation on the same because in cost model investment property we do provide depreciation over the life of asset so we'll continue providing the depreciation on the asset so there is no change what is the change happening into balance sheet previously asset was recorded under the head investment property now it is recorded under the head of property, property plant, plant and equipment otherwise no change is happening same way carrying amount will continue providing the depreciation that is the first option second option is say if we followed fair value model for investment property so in case of fair value model so whenever we are transferring an asset the transfer has to be done at fair value so whenever this transfer is happening first of all before the transfer i am again repeating before the transfer we need to revalue the property at fair value as for example our accounting period is say uh, january 19 to december 19 so from january to june we uh, that asset was rented out and from july onwards we we are using that asset for our own occupants so from january to june it is what investment property and july onwards it is considered as property plant and equipment now during january to june when it was investment property we used to follow fair value model so yes, in on 1st of july when we transfer this asset to property plant and equipment this transfer we need to carry out at fair value so we need to revalue the property at fair value that means on 30 june or say 1st of july we need to check what is the fair value or market value of same building so first of all we need to revalue the asset so say for example on 1st of january value of building was say 15 lakhs now on 30 june say the value of building is 16 lakhs so before doing the transfer to property plant and equipment first of all we need to increase the value of building by 15 to 16 lakhs and then the transfer will be done so whenever we are recording this fair value change what is the nature of asset it was investment property so into investment property any fair value change where we account into statement of profit or profit or loss. loss so if value is increasing we will increase the value of asset gain will record into profit loss account if value is decreasing then there is a loss so we will decrease the value of asset and will record the loss into statement of profit or loss and after that asset will be transferred to property plant and equipment So say fifteen was the asset, sixteen is the value. So now from first July onwards, sixteen lakhs is the value of asset that will be presented into <coughs> balance sheet as property, plant, and equipment, or we can say non-current asset. This is also investment property is not is not non-current asset. We can say it is property, plant, and equipment. And on July onwards, what we will do? We'll follow the treatment as per IS sixteen. Okay, sir. So, 
how to decide carrying amount or fair value so we need to see what accounting model we are following when it is investment property if it is cost model at carrying amount if it is fair value model then at fair value <coughs> excuse me <coughs> second scenario we see that transfer from investment property to inventory <coughs> now this will come in only in case of say a builder or a contractor so say initially a building contractor or a builder has constructed a building but it was not for the purpose of sale it is given on rent or just constructed and want to have some capital appreciation on the same so when the purpose of holding the building is say capital appreciation or earning rental income so that point of time it is investment property now builder wants to sell this asset <coughs> so selling means now for builder what it will happen it will become what inventory then it will become as normal trade uh, inventory so here also whenever the transfer will be done from investment property to inventory so here again a question will come that transfer will be done at carrying amount or fair value <coughs> so here also we need to see what accounting model we are following for investment property so if we followed cost model transfer will be done at carrying amount so what will happen simply from investment property the value of asset will come under the head of current asset as an inventory this is not this line is below here this alignment has just been so don't consider it is under this option and if we have used to say fair value model then again same as property plan and equipment before transfer revalue the property at fair value and then transfer it to inventory so before transferring revalue any gain or loss will be recorded into statement of profit or loss so there's two types of transfer gain be there we have seen investment property to property plant and equipment and investment property to inventory so one day it is transferred to inventory then accounting treatment as per is2 will be followed any questions on to this anyone any questions this we have seen a uh, transfer from investment property now we will see transfer to investment property but before that please confirm everyone into chat box quickly is this clear to everyone fatafat confirm karo all please ek baar okay everyone still some abhi bhi everybody is not replied yet sapta yes dev is it clear everyone please sabko reply kar do yes sir i replied so now uh, from transfer to investment property that means currently what we are doing currently the building was owner occupied and now it is vacated and it is given on rent to someone or we can say it is just put as a capital appreciation so whenever a building or say land is owner occupied that means we are following what is 16 property plant and equipment 
and after transfer we need to follow is 40 so here also question will come at what value this transfer will be done is it at carrying amount or is it at fair value so here also same question we need to ask what so once it will be transferred to investment property how we are going to account investment property is are we going to follow cost model for investment property or are we going to follow fair value so if we are planning to follow cost model when asset will get converted into investment property then transfer will be done at carrying amount and will continue provide being depreciation on the same as it is so what change will come here only thing is previously asset was recognized under the heading property plant and equipment now it will come under the head of investment property now say if we uh, we are planning to follow fair value model once it we convert the asset into investment property now this is important part so again transfer will be done at what fair value and so before revalue transfer what we need to do we need to revalue the property plant and equipment at fair value and then we need to transfer so here before transfer the fair value change that we are finding out so where this fair value change will be accounted so if the fair value is increasing then we need to account as a part of statement of other comprehensive income now why other comprehensive income to so understand when we are remeasuring we are revaluing before transfer so before transfer asset is covered under which standard is 16 and as per is 16 whenever fair value of the asset is increasing we always record as a part of statement of other comprehensive income so in both the cases investment property to owner occupied property or owner occupied property to investment property remeasurement is always happening before transfer so before transfer any revaluation we are carrying out we need to see before transfer in under which standard asset is covered so here asset is covered as per is 16 <coughs> and as per is 16 increase in the fair value needs to be accounted as a part of statement of other comprehensive income if value is decreasing then will charge to profit or loss but after doing this adjustment transfer will be Done. so this is important part be careful on this part so this is transfer from owner occupied property to investment property then after the transfer accounting treatment as per is 40 will be followed <coughs> and second is transfer from inventory to investment property so here also what we need to see say Uh, this will again this will come in case of builders only so say builders constructed a building and the matlab they say a builder has constructed three three building initially <coughs> the plan was to sell it off so it was for builder it is inventory it is stock but now builder is deciding not to sell it but just want to keep it as a capital appreciation or just want to give it on lease so previously it was inventory now it is shifting to investment property so here also we need to ask the same question when it will be converted into investment property what accounting treatment we are going to follow if we are going to follow cost model then transfer will be done at carrying amount if we are going to follow fair value model then transfer will be done at fair value so in that case before transfer we need to revalue the property at fair value now before transfer it was inventory inventory is our trading item so it is an item relating to our statement of profit or loss 
so any change into fair value that we will record into statement of profit or loss so this is our investment property is all about isse zyada investment property mein kuch nahi so important part to consider here is the transfers now coming to textbook a manufacturing entity purchases a property for 1 million dollars on 1st of january 2011 for the investment potential the land element of the cost is believed to be 4 lakh dollars and the building element is expected to have useful life of 50 years at 31st december 2011 local property indices suggest that fair value of the property has risen to 1.1 million required show how the property would be presented into financial statement as 31st december 2011 if company adopt cost model and if company adopts fair value let me share excel so this is the question property was purchased on say 1st january 2011 it was purchased for how much 10 lakhs 1 million out of this now this is total value of land and building out of this 4 lakh is for the land and the remaining part that is 6 lakh building now we are what what is it what is the financial statement will show uh, what is the presentation into financial statement as on 31st december 2011 Okay, now first of all, say we are following cost model for the investment property. So cost model means what? Just provide depreciation and no revaluation is allowed. Okay. Uh, the building element have a useful life of fifty years. So land and building we have land is worth four lakhs. is on 1st january 2000 okay now so cost model means we may simply need, we simply needs to calculate depreciation for the uh, 2011 so depreciation 2011 now land is non depreciable asset that means here it will be zero and life of building is 50 years so 50 years means simply divide this by 50 so this is our annual depreciation so this is the value that is on 31st december 2011 what is the value 4 lakhs and this is this minus this 580 
the total value of land and building will be presented into this 988 so what is the state uh, presentation into statement of profit or loss account statement of profit or loss so simply only one thing will come depreciation 12000 and in statement of financial position that is balance sheet land and building it will be presented at 988 so this is the treatment if we follow cost model now say if we are following the fair value model fair value model what is given uh, manufacturing NTD proper potential land is cost is for like building element have this on 31st December 2011 Local property indices suggest that fair value of the property has risen to 1.1 million. So previously value was 10 lakhs. Now value has increased to 11. So there is a surplus of 1 lakh. Sorry. Yes. Minus. Now, in case of fair value model, depreciation is not provided. So, simply on reporting date, that is 31st December 2011, what we will see? We will see the fair value change. Now, here, fair value is increasing. So, uh, value on 1st January 2011. So, that is the 10 lakh. Fair value on 31st December 2011, that is 11 lakhs, 1.1 million. So gain on revaluation, fair value, remeasurement or revaluation is one like this, minus this. So here in this case, what will come into statement of profit or loss? It will be gain on fair value, reval, uh, fair value, re, uh, gain on fair value change of investment property that is one lakh. So here it is expense, here it is surplus, and into statement of financial position, land and building. It will be presented at what value? 1.1. This is the difference between two models, cost model and fair value. So here we provide depreciation, but be very careful. Land is a non-depreciable asset. So do not provide any depreciation on building part. We need to provide depreciation. Building has life of 50 years divided by 50, 12,000 is the annual depreciation. So this will go as an expense into our statement of profit to loss account and this will be the carrying amount of land and building both cumulatively 9,88,000 as on 31st December 2011. And in case of fair value model, depreciation is not allowed. On reporting date, there is a surplus in fair value that is 1 lakh. So this should be accounted as a gain into profit loss account and into balance sheet now land and building will be shown at 11. sir yes uh in the balance sheet do we have to like show the difference like uh, just, like just a little bit louder there please Thoda, sir. uh can you uh, hear me now yeah now it's fine yeah, I, I was asking that in balance sheet, do we have to show uh, that we have to transfer it from the property, plant property? Oh, it is transferred. Malabhi. There is no graphical presentation into balance sheet. Okay. Previously, it was in property, plant and equipment. Now it's into investment. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That disclosure will be there as a part of note to account. Okay. 
that additional disclosure so it will be presented that yes um, previously we have this building we are utilizing this as an investment property now we you are using this asset as owner of your property from this and this this date and on this date fair value of the asset was this this so all details will be provided as a part of notes notes so in balance sheet simply now on the reporting date so uh, balance sheet how you can see the change so said you have balance sheet of december 2019 so it was there as a part of invest it was presented as an investment property now on december 20 same asset will you can see as a property plan to nifty mm-hmm. but this change has happened that we need to disclose so that readers can understand that there this change has happened okay. Okay. thank you Uh, sir yes uh, sir that uh, means in balance sheet uh, mm. we will li- write directly 988000 yes okay means appreciation and all we won't write all that appreciation is a part of statement of profit or loss okay so on balance sheet whenever we prepare balance sheet we have the final figures only for that different schedules are prepared that what is the opting balance what is current year depreciation is there any addition during the current year is there any disposal during the current year so there is a separate schedule for the fixed asset right okay, so sir. in balance sheet we only get the values as on 31st december so see current asset also see in current asset we may have inventories we have debtors we have bank balance we have cash balance so in balance sheet we simply put current asset in under the current asset and we put inventory so inventory is the final value which what we have on december or say we have debtors so now we debtors we have 100 uh, customers but will not present the all 100 names it is into balance sheet is just one amount debtors and then for separate schedule the breakup will be given for this say for 10 lakhs of debtors that how many customers are there so here also Uh, on into balance sheet we just simply put the value as on 31st december there are separate schedules prepared for all that is say for profit and loss items also and for balance sheet items okay thank you sir now the company purchased an investment property some years ago and carries it under the fair value model On first of January two thousand eleven, uh, property had a fair value in the financial statement of twelve million. On first of July two thousand eleven, company decided to move into property and use it for the own business. As on this date, asset had a fair value of fourteen million. Remaining useful life is fourteen years. So, what amount should be recorded into? statement of profit or loss for the year ended december 2011 the property this was this was purchased on first company invest from the some years ago uh, and fell okay so initially company purchased the property and they are holding that asset as an investment property so investment property previously and for that what they are calling under fair value model so fair value model was formed now on 1st of january 2011 this was january 2011 fair value is into financial statement fair value in balance sheet is 12 million Twelve million. Uh, I need to add one more. 
on 1st July 2011. Now they are shifting this asset as what for their own business. So now it is own business and fair value is given 14 million. And remaining life is 14 years. Now, what is this transfer? This is transfer from investment property. owner occupied property that is from is 40 to is 60 now we need to see what value it will be transferred so question number one Transfer at carrying amount or at fair value. What we need to see. So here we need to see accounting model followed for investment property is what fair value model that means transfer at fair value so now before transfer we need to revalue the asset so on 1st of july the opening balance of asset was 12 million now before transfer we need to revalue so 14 minus 12 so there is a fair value surplus fair value change and that is positive into this is what into investment property because we, we are revaluing it before transfer and before transfer it is investment property so this 2 million will be recorded into where 2 million gain record into where Statement of profit or loss or OCI. Yeah, no comprehensive income. OCI or profit loss. Profit loss. Yes. On OCI con bol rahe, or profit loss con bol rahe, or uska reason to. Uh, profit loss because wo investment properties. Profit profit loss because wo investment properties se. Uh, owner occupied mein ja raha hai. Okay. and uh, OCI should be when it is tra transferred from OCI uh, sorry uh, owner occupied to investment property okay Abhi, second option OCI kis ne bola tha kyun OCI bola batao yes one the OCI option yes who was saying OCI अभी बोलो तो सही अभी मैंने कहा बोला कौन सा आंसर सही है गलत है डिस्कस करो तो ही मजा आएगा ये जो वो सेइंग ओसीआई व्हाई ओसीआई देखो आंसर दोगे तो फिर आपको मैं लॉजिक क्या यूज किया वो भी पता ना पड़ेगा डिस्कस करो तो ही अंडरस्टैंडिंग बढ़ेगी तो ज्यादा से ज्यादा क्या होगा बोलोगे तो गलत आंसर होगा इसमें और तो क्या होगा Again, at least you are discussing, you are applying your mind. Okay, so wo, that brain will be okay. So, what is happening here? Investment property is owner occupied transfer. It is owner occupied. And ja again, I uh, very carefully said that we have to do transfer se pehle revaluation. Kar hai. So, transfer is the asset. Hai? Investment property is. 
तो इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी है तो उसमें अगर जब भी फेयर वैल्यू में चेंज आता है तो हम कहाँ पे अकाउंट करते हैं इन टू स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस जब उल्टा केस होगा जब ओनर ऑफ प्रोपर्ट प्रॉपर्टी से अगर इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी में जा रहा है तो उस केस में ओ में रिकॉर्ड होगा तो यहाँ पे टू मिलियन विल बी रिकॉर्डेड इन प्रॉफिट और लॉस सो अभी हो गया फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई सो फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई 2011 अभी ये क्या हो गया प्रॉपर्टी प्लान इक्विपमेंट और वो इसका वैल्यू कितना हो गया 14 मिलियन अब इस पे क्या करेंगे नाउ विल कंटिन्यू दिस काउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट एज पर आई एस सिक्सटीन अच्छा अभी इसका कितना लाइफ बाकी है 14 ईयर्स तो इसको रिमेनिंग 14 ईयर्स में डेप्रिशिएट करेंगे अभी तो ये क्या हो गया प्रॉपर्टी प्लान इक्विपमेंट तो अभी इस पर डेप्रिशिएशन देना है तो दिस इज फोर्टीन डिवाइडेड बाय 14 ईयर्स और करंट ईयर में कितना आएगा देखो ओनली हाफ ईयर डेप्रिशिएशन क्योंकि हमने जुलाई से लिया है तो जुलाई से दिसंबर तक का डेप्रिशिएशन आएगा सो दिस इज अवर एनुअल डेप्रिशिएशन दिस डिवाइडेड बाय टू तो हमारे फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में क्या आएगा तो सबसे पहले तो स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस तो so, यहाँ पे आएगा क्या सबसे पहले तो ये नॉन फेयर वैल्यू चेंज दैट इज टू मिलियन फिर डेप्रिशिएशन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन दो चीज आएगा हमारा प्रॉफिट लॉस में और स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पोजीशन ये क्या हो जाएगा दिसंबर में प्रॉपर्टी प्लांट एंड इक्विपमेंट और क्या वैल्यू पे आएगा सो so 14 मिलियन वॉज दी कैरिंग अमाउंट उसमें से हमने 0.5 का डेप्रिशिएशन माइनस किया सो सॉरी सो 13.5 इज दी वैल्यू ऑफ असेट दैट विल बी प्रेजेंटेड इन टू बैलेंस इसका इतना इम्पैक्ट आएगा सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई रिवैल्यूएशन करना है क्योंकि हमें फेयर वैल्यू पे ट्रांसफर करना है क्यों क्योंकि इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी हमने फेयर वैल्यू पे अकाउंट किया ट्रांसफर से पहले जो रिवैल्यूएशन किया वो इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी में हुआ है तो इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी का रिवैल्यूएशन सरप्लस या रिवैल्यूएशन लॉस जो भी होगा वो प्रॉफिट लॉस में अकाउंट होगा और ट्रांसफर होने के बाद हम अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट फॉलो करेंगे एज पर आई एस तो आई एस मतलब चीज हमें उसमें से नॉर्मल प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट होता है तो हम उस पर डेप्रिशिएशन प्रोवाइड करते हैं सो डेप्रिशिएशन रिमेनिंग लाइफ इज 14 ईयर्स सो डिवाइड बाय 14 करेंगे तो विल गेट दी एनुअल डेप्रिशिएशन लेकिन यहाँ पे हमारा करंट अकाउंटिंग पीरियड में ओनली सिक्स मंथ्स इट इज प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट जुलाई के बाद वो कन्वर्ट हुआ है सो वी कैन क्लेम द डेप्रिशिएशन ओनली फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स एंड नॉट फॉर द फुल ईयर तो इसलिए हाफ डेप्रिशिएशन इज इट फाइन विद ऑल Yes, sir. so this is all about investment property so we have finished is 16 and is 40 now let's go for the is 23 that is borrowing cost very small standard uh, but technically it is important uh, very few things that we need to keep in mind 
so normal case mein what uh, what do you understand by borrowing cost what is the borrowing cost pehle chalo pura discuss karte hain sabhi everyone sabko participate karna hai thoda thoda what is borrowing cost interest on loan theek hai interest ho gaya fir aur kuch ho sakta hai borrowing cost mein interest part ho gaya fir anyone yes Only few students are participating. What about others? सब ने fees नहीं भरा है. तीन लोगों ने fees भरा इसलिए. I I'll allow everyone to speak. सबको करना. ऐसा नहीं कि अगर किसी का fees बाकी है या तो फिर वो participate नहीं कर सकते. Participate सबको करना. मुझे मेरा fees से लेना देना नहीं. मुझे lecture में participation चाहिए. बोलो तो सही, guys. इमाद, अथर्व, विरागी. सेजल नील बावे एक्वायर करने के लिए जो भी चीज कुछ एक्वायर करते हैं तो वो एक्वायर करने के लिए जो भी कॉस्ट लगता है वो बोरिंग कॉस्ट है शायद मतलब क्या एक्वायर करने के लिए कुछ भी सपोज अभी एसेट्स एक्वायर कर रहे हैं सपोज एक बिल्डिंग एक्वायर कर रहे हैं दूसरे नाम पे एक कंपनी के नाम पे तो फिर बीच में एक कुछ स्टैम्प ड्यूटी वगैरह लगता है या कुछ जो भी एक्सपेंसिस लगते हैं तो उसको बोरिंग कॉस्ट शायद बोला जाता है ठीक है कोई और एनीवन स्वीटी सेजल इवान नील आर यू गाइस देयर एक बार सर एवरीवन प्लीज पहले तो अपना वीडियो चालू कर दो जो हम सर फाइनेंस बोरो करते हैं वो जो बोरोड फंड्स पे जो हमें इंटरेस्ट पे करना होता है वो बोरोड कॉस्ट है Sir, the amount which we have to pay uh, over over the amount which we have borrowed. Okay. Finance charges. So basically, whatever the uh, whatever cost we are incurring uh, on borrowing of funds. So basically, वो interest हो गया या फिर हमने कोई अगर loan processing charges pay किया है, so that is also considered as my borrowing cost. ठीक है. So in normal case, how do we account this borrowing cost? Yes. कैसे अकाउंटिंग करते हैं नॉर्मल इंटरेस्ट हम कहां पे रिकॉर्ड करते हैं स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस एज अ फाइनेंस कॉस्ट और इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस सो दिस इज द नॉर्मल ट्रीटमेंट व्हाट वी फॉलो फॉर इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस और वी कैन से बोरोइंग कॉस्ट ओके नाउ व्हाट द स्टैंडर्ड इज सेइंग स्टैंडर्ड इज सेइंग दैट देयर आर सर्टेन स्पेसिफिक सिचुएशंस where the funds what we have borrowed and cost we are incurring so that borrowing cost we can capitalize into certain specific situation so this standard is focusing on that part when we can capitalize the borrowing cost so normal treatment is very clear it is state of which asks to statement of profit or loss but when borrowing cost is incurred to purchase or construct a qualifying asset which is taking substantial period of time to get it ready for the intended use or sale then it can be conceived can be capitalized so say uh, qualifying asset qualifying asset means asset which is taking substantial period of time now here into standard there is no clear cut a uh, guidance or say we give uh, information given about what is to be considered as a substantial period of time but normally substantial period of time is considered as 12 months no specific criteria into standard but if any asset which is taking at least say 12 months of time to get it ready for the use or sale and if we are borrowing any funds to purchase these assets or to construct this assets so on the borrowing whatever cost we are incurring that we can capitalize into the cost of asset ठीक है तो जो भी हमने जो असेट परचेज कर रहे हैं या फिर जो असेट हम कंस्ट्रक्ट कर रहे हैं सो उसके लिए हमने अगर लोन बोरो किया है 
तो वो लोन का जो इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट होगा उसको हम राधर देन प्रॉफिट लॉस में डेबिट करने की जगह पे क्या करेंगे हम उसको कैपिटलाइज करेंगे वो क्वालिफाइंग असेट के कॉस्ट में सो दैट इज व्हाट बोरिंग कॉस्ट इज सेइंग सो आई एस ट्वेंटी थ्री बोरिंग कॉस्ट रेगुलेट्स द एक्सटेंट टू विच एंटिटीज आर अलाउड टू कैपिटलाइज द बोरिंग कॉस्ट इनकर्ड ऑन मनी बोरो टू फाइनेंस द एक्विजिशन ऑफ सर्टन असेट so it regulates to what extent entity can capitalize so this should be capitalized as a part of cost of asset if the asset is a qualifying asset qualifying asset means one which is taking substantial period of time to get it ready Sir. again i am repeating there is no clear cut bifurcation no criteria given for what is to be considered as substantial period of time but it is in normal practice we consider it 12 month period as a substantial period of time so if say we are constructing a building building will take 12 months of time to get it ready and say we have borrowed some funds to construct the building then interest incurred on that loan we can capitalize into cost of building rather than charging it to profit or loss so when we capitalize it into cost of building then what will happen so once building will be ready we'll start providing depreciation on the same so that cost borrowing cost will also be what it will be allocated over a life of asset so it is a capital life sir yes sir if we purchase the asset for the intention mm -hmm. of to intention to sell then it's invent you know it is that is perfectly fine the whether it is for the use or sale that is perfectly fine but if it is taking substantial period of time either for the use or for the sale so for inventory also it can be added into cost of inventory okay. so if builder is there builder is borrowing a loan and builder is constructing a building but that building is taking period of say 2 years of time so that interest cost will be added as a part of cost of inventory wo cost kya ho jayega building ke value mein add ho jayega wo alag se finance cost nahi dena hai okay okay now is 23 states that capitalization of borrowing sh should commence when all the following conditions are met now bol to diya capitalize kar sakte lekin there are conditions attached with it कंडीशंस क्या है कंडीशन so में है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्सपेंडिचर फॉर द असेट इज बीइंग दैट मींस कि अगर हमने कोई चलो बिल्डिंग डिसाइड किया वी आर प्लानिंग टू स्टार्ट कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द बिल्डिंग दैट फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज एक्सपेंडिचर फॉर द असेट इज बीइंग इनकर दैट मींस सम एक्टिविटी इज स्टार्टेड टू कंस्ट्रक्ट द बिल्डिंग एक्टिविटी स्टार्टेड दैट मीन एक्सपेंडिचर इज इनकर then second condition is borrowing cost are being incurred that means we borrowed a loan so once we start we borrow the loan that interest cost will start <coughs> so expenditure on asset is also been incurred and borrowing cost is also incurred and very important condition is the last one that is activities that are necessary to prepare the asset for the use or sale are in progress that means construction activity is into progress so that is the only period when cost can be capitalized so say for example first of january entity has borrowed a loan entity wants to construct a building so for that they need funds and on 1st of january they borrowed a loan so now on 1st of january we can see yes borrow so from 1st of january interest cost will start so means borrowing cost is being incurred ntt started construction say from 1st of march so 1st of march we can say expenditure on the asset is being incurred now we need to see all the conditions together so first of january borrowing cost is incurred but there is no expenditure on the asset 
तो कैपिटलाइजेशन के नॉट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दी मंथ ऑफ जनवरी बिल्डिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च सो ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च बोथ दी कंडीशन आर सेटिस्फाइंग दैट इज एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन असेट इज ऑल्सो इनकर्ड एंड बोरिंग कॉस्ट इज ऑल्सो देर एंड थर्ड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन इज construction activity should be in process so yes so we starting from 1st of march that means from 1st of march construction activity is into process now so this building is built going to take 2 years of period of time so that means so it is a substantial period of time so into first year that is say for example 2019 so 1st of january 2019 loan liya 1st march 2019 construction start hua अभी हमारा ईयर एंड आएगा थर्टी फर्स्ट डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ना ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन वी नीड टू क्लोज अवर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट सो 31 फर्स्ट डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन में हमारे फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में क्या जाएगा नाउ फर्स्ट मार्च से स्टार्ट किया है नाउ बिल्डिंग इज गोइंग टू टेक टू ईयर्स ऑफ टाइम दैट मीन्स के फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च से कंस्ट्रक्शन इज इन टू प्रोग्रेस वो कंटिन्यूसली चालू है यानी कि फ्रॉम मार्च टू डिसम्बर 10 months is the period when construction was in progress during the current accounting period abhi humne borrowing cost kitne period ke liye incur kiya we borrowed fund from 1st of january to hamara interest cost to ho gaya 12 months ke liye lekin hamara construction start hua march se aur fir uske baad continuous process mein so only 10 month cost we can capitalize तो से फॉर एग्जांपल अगर हमारा टोटल बोरिंग कॉस्ट आ रहा है ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड डॉलर सो ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड इज दी एनुअल कॉस्ट सो टू मंथ्स कॉस्ट इज विल बी चार्ज टू वे स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस एंड फ्रॉम फर्स्ट मार्च ऑनवर्ड्स टेन मंथ्स कॉस्ट इट विल बी एडेड इन टू कॉस्ट ऑफ असेट दैट इज टेन थाउजेंड विल बी एडेड इन कॉस्ट ऑफ असेट so see from 1st of march to 31st december all these three conditions are satisfying together that is expenditure on asset is also incurred borrowing cost is also incurred and construction activities are also into progress now let's modify it little bit say for example 1st of march we started the construction activity but during the month of say june and july due to heavy rain construction activity has stopped it was not possible for the uh, labor or say contractor to work during this period so this two months period that is june and july construction activity was stopped so theek hai construction ruk jayega lekin interest to chalta hi rahega interest is not going to stop So now we started construction from 1st of March. Our accounting period is ending on 31st of December. But during this period of March to December, two month period where there was no construction activity in progress. So वो दो महीने का cost भी क्या होगा? हमें statement of profit loss में charge करना पड़ेगा. So very important condition is the third one that construction activity must be into progress. तो so, यानी कि हमने 2019 में टोटल इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट इज अवर 12,000 सो जनवरी एंड फेब्रुवरी देर वाज नो कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्टेड सो टू मंथ्स कॉस्ट इट विल गो टू प्रॉफिट लॉस अकाउंट फ्रॉम मार्च ऑनवर्ड्स कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्टेड बट इन जून एंड जुलाई कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी वाज सस्पेंडेड सो अगेन दिस टू मंथ्स इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट ऑल्सो वी कैन नॉट कैपिटलाइज इट दिस कॉस्ट ऑल्सो वी नीड टू चार्ज टू प्रॉफिट और लॉस सो टोटल annual expense of 12000 out of which 4000 that is four months expense it will be charged to statement of profit or loss and 8000 that is eight month cost it will be charged to say cost of asset that means it will be capitalized any questions on to this anyone is this clear to all constructs all three conditions we need to see together is anyone any questions on to this if all are comfortable please just put y into chat box so yes i can know that everybody is getting it all please quickly
now one more additional thing say for example company have a construction planning for 2 years and say overall fund they required for this is say 50 lakhs <coughs> so ntd borrowed funds of 50 lakhs but out of which 20 lakhs they are going to require from the start of second year means that the the entity's plan is to construct the building over say 2019 and 2020 december 20 is the date when they are planning to complete the building so they borrowed 50 lakhs from the bank but currently as per the construction plan or the the they currently need only 30 lakhs 20 lakhs they do not need they will need 20 lakhs from 1st of january 2020 so what they are doing this 20 lakhs they are investing temporarily into someone say they made a fixed deposit with the bank now what will happen in this case so on 1st january itself 2019 they borrowed a loan of 50 lakhs and out of this on the same date what they have done they put and fixed deposit they put a fixed deposit of 20 lakhs with the same bank now on the fixed deposit ntd is going to on what interest income so how to deal with this interest income now there are two scenarios are there first one january and february so january and february is the period where we are not capitalizing it we are charging the interest cost into statement of profit or loss account because there were no construction activities during that period so during this period that is january and february any income which is earned on this fixed deposit it will be considered as our interest income or finance income and that we will credit into statement of profit or loss but from march onwards that is from march to december considering there is no suspension of work continuous activity going on during march to december so at the end of the year say for example we are generating uh, say interest income of 6000 so total annual interest income is 6000 out of this 6000 two months income that is january and february it is credited into statement of profit or loss and 10 months interest income how much that is 5000 so 5000 what we will do 5000 we need to deduct from the interest cost kya tha dekho humne pehle hamara expense kitna hai 12000 So 12,000 में से हमने क्या किया 2,000 हमने प्रॉफिट लॉस में डेबिट किया 10,000 कैपिटलाइज किया उसके सामने हमारा टेम्पररी इन्वेस्टमेंट में इनकम आ रहा है 6,000। सो so 6,000 में से जो दो महीने का है वो कितना होगा 1,000। सो so 1,000 हम क्रेडिट करेंगे प्रॉफिट लॉस अकाउंट में लेकिन जो 5,000 हुआ जो मार्च से लेके डिसम्बर का है सो so मार्च से लेके डिसम्बर का हमारा कॉस्ट कितना है 10000 उसके सामने हमें इनकम मिला 5000 फ्रॉम कैपिटलाइज कितना करेंगे कॉस्ट ओनली 5000 दैट इज नेट अमाउंट सर मैं हमने बोरिंग कॉस्ट इंटर किया था 10000 का बट हमने टेंपरेरी इन्वेस्टमेंट कर दिया उसी फंड का सो so उस फंड पे हमने इंटरेस्ट इनकम जनरेट किया सो so जो हमारा इनकम है उसको हम एक्सपेंस से माइनस कर देंगे सिर्फ नेट अमाउंट हमें कैपिटलाइज करना है फॉर द पी तो फाइव थाउजेंड हमारा इंटरेस्ट इनकम है फाइव थाउजेंड आप हम दस हजार से माइनस कर देंगे सो ओनली कॉस्ट टू बी कैपिटलाइज इज फाइव थाउजेंड ठीक है सो दिस इज अबाउट टेम्पररी इन्वेस्टमेंट ये तभी से करेंगे ना जब से अपना ये कंस्ट्रक्शन चालू होगा मार्च से सो हमारा एनुअल इनकम है सिक्स थाउजेंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्वेंटी लैक्स के फिक्स डिपोजिट कर में पूरे साल का छह हजार का इंटरेस्ट मिल रहा है तो शुरू के दो महीने का वो एक हजार इंटरेस्ट है बाकी के मार्च के जो कैलकुलेट करते हैं प्रोपोर्शनेटली तो वो फाइव थाउजेंड आ रहा है कैपिटलाइजेशन में लेस हो जाएगा
तो वो जो मार्च कैपिटलाइजेशन पीरियड है वो कैपिटलाइजेशन से लेस हो जाएगा अदर देन कैपिटलाइजेशन पीरियड है वो सीधा सीधा प्रॉफिट लॉस में चला जाएगा ठीक है जी दूसरा पार्ट है रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अभी रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट क्या यूज करेंगे तो इसमें दो केस हो सकता है सबसे पहले हो गया स्पेसिफिक बोरोइंग तो स्पेसिफिक बोरोइंग में तो रेट के लिए कोई कंफ्यूजन है ही नहीं कि हमने लोन भी बोरो किया है पर्टिकुलर बिल्डिंग कंस्ट्रक्ट करने के लिए तो वो जो रेट पे लोन आया वही रेट से हम लोन यूज करेंगे नाउ से फॉर एग्जांपल हमने दो अलग अलग लोन लिए और दोनों के रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट अलग अलग है तो एक लोन लिया से फॉर एग्जांपल हमने 5 परसेंट में और दूसरा लोन लिया हमने 7 परसेंट में और दोनों फंड हम यूटिलाइज कर रहे हैं फॉर अ कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ क्वालिफाइंग असेट तो इन दैट केस हम क्या करेंगे कौन सा रेट यूज करेंगे फाइव और सेवन सो इन दैट केस वी नीड टू Use the weighted average borrowing rate. हम उसका एवरेज निकालेंगे कैसे निकालेंगे तो से कंपनी टुक आउट टेन मिलियन सिक्स परसेंट लोन ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी टू थाउजेंड इलेवन टू बिल्ड अ न्यू फुटबॉल स्टेडियम नॉट ऑल द पॉइंट वेर इमीडिएटली रिक्वायर्ड so 2 million was invested okay this is on the temporary investment this is separate okay let uh, pehle ye weighted average borrowing rate ka dekh lete hain fir ye question ka okay here so the entity had a 10 million 6% loan and 2 million 8% loan both loans are being uh, utilized for construction of a qualifying asset now at what rate we will capitalize it so first of all to, so we need to find out weighted average borrowing rate and to find out weighted average borrowing rate this is the formula that's so first of all here we will add the interest cost of the both the borrowing that is first is 10 million 6% so 10 million into 6% that is the interest cost on first loan plus 2 million into 8% that is interest cost on second loan that means we are finding out the what is our total interest cost divided by the total borrowing that is 10 million plus 12 million so we'll get the average rate of 6.33 percent So 6.33 percent is the rate at which we will capitalize the amount. So our jobi total cost hai. So we will find out the cost at 6.33 percent, and that only we will capitalize into the cost of asset. So this will be our weighted average. Another important aspect is cessation of capitalization. तो इट्स ऐसा जरूरी नहीं देखो लोन हमने ले या हो सकता है कि फाइव इयर्स का लोन हो सकता है लेकिन हमारा कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी दो साल के लिए ही चलेगा सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन है कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी जब प्रोग्रेस में होगा उसी पीरियड पे कैपिटलाइज कर सकते हैं सो हमने लोन लिया वंस कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटी इज कंप्लीटेड आफ्टर दैट वी कैन नॉट कैपिटलाइज सो उसके बाद जो इंटरेस्ट होगा वो हमें क्या करना पड़ेगा प्रॉफिट लॉस में चार्ज करना पड़ेगा सो कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ फॉरिंग कॉस्ट शुड सीज when either substantially all the activities necessary to prepare the qualifying asset for the intended use or sale are complete or construction is suspended for example due to industrial dispute yani ki do case ho gaya ek to construction complete ho gaya to uske baad capitalize nahi karenge aur dusra ki agar construction period mein hi jaisa humne discuss kiya ki because of any reason heavy rain or any dispute or anything xyz reason agar कुछ पीरियड के लिए कंस्ट्रक्शन सस्पेंड हो चुका है स्टॉप हो चुका है सो so उस पीरियड में हम कैपिटलाइज करेंगे नहीं दिस इज ऑल अबाउट बोरोइंग कॉस्ट इसके आगे बोरोइंग कॉस्ट में कुछ नहीं क्वेश्चन देख लेते हैं एंटिटी टू कॉट 
10 million 6% loan on 1st of January 2011 to build a new football stadium. Now, not all the funds were immediately required, so 2 million was invested in 3% bond until June 2011. Construction began on 1st of February and it was completed on 31st of December. So calculate the amount of interest to be capitalized at 31st December 2011. Just to in brief, first January 2011, loan taken that is 10 million, that is one CR. funds are not required so from 1st January 2011 to 30th June 2011 2 million that is 20 lakh this was invested temporary at 3% Construction started on 1st of February. First February 2011. Completed on 31st December. So we need to find out how much cost we can capitalize for the period ending December 2011. Okay, now we have multiple dates here. That is first is first of January. This is what when borrowing cost is being incurred. Well, on first of January onwards, borrowing cost is incurred. So this is the first date borrowing cost incurred. Then we have first of February 2011 expense on asset incurred so this is being incurred from 1st of february and the last is 31st december so that is from 1st february 2011 to 31st december 2011 this is we can say construction period which construction was in progress So to capitalize, we need to see all the three conditions together. That is, borrowing cost should have been incurred, expense on asset must be incurred, and the construction activity must be into progress. That means we can capitalize from starting from 1st of February to 31st December only. That. So now, first of all, how much is the loan? One CR. So what is the interest cost? So that is. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 600,000. Interest that is at 6%. So this into 6 divided by 100. The 6 lakhs is the annual interest. Now, out of this. First of all, how much we can capitalize? We can capitalize only for the 11 months. That is starting from February onwards. So, 6 lakhs 5 lakh 50, into 1 divided by 12. This is for the month of January. Charge to profit or loss. 
and remaining 11 lakhs that is 6 lakhs into 11 by 12 that means this is february to december this we can capitalize <coughs> okay now one more thing we need to see now we have invested 2 million from 1st january itself and that is for how many months six months so that on that investment interest income is our let's say it interest is our income so how much interest income we are receiving so interest income 20 lakhs is the temporary investment on this interest income is this into how much 3% is the rate, but 3% is what? Annual rate. And we invested only for 6 months. So interest will, income will be half. So this divided by 2. So this is the total interest income that NTT has earned during January to June. Now for the month of January, there was no construction activity going on. So for the month of January, we cannot capitalize it. So here also we need to divide this into two parts. So 30,000 is the interest income for six months. So how much for one month? Only we can capitalize only five months. That is from February to June. So <coughs> this into one divided by six. This is for the month of January, charge to profit or loss as income. And remaining 25,000, that is from February to June, deduct from was to capital. So this is we need to deduct from capitalization. So how much we are going to capitalize during the year? 550. How much temporary investment income earned during the construction period? That is 25. So how much we are going to capitalize for the year is 550 minus 25,000. So net 525,000 is the cost that we are going to capitalize as to cost of asset. Okay, so this period is February to December. This pura hamara interest jo hai wo hum capitalize karenge. Lekin ye jo capitalization period hai, usme ye period jo February se leke June tak humne uspe interest income bhi earn kiya hai. So jo interest income humne earn kiya hai, wo hum ye cost कॉस्ट से माइनस कर देंगे नेट कॉस्ट ही हम सिर्फ कैपिटलाइज कर सो प्रॉफिट लॉस में क्या जाएगा सो so, अगर हम ये हमारा फॉर एग्जांपल चलो एक बार दिस इज माय स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस तो so, यहां पे आ जाएगा हमारा इंटरेस्ट इनकम इंटरेस्ट इनकम कितना है जनवरी महीने का दैट इज 5000 इसके बाद इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस वो भी जनवरी मंथ का दैट इज 50000 बाकी का जो पार्ट है दैट इज 525 वो हमारे एसेट के कॉस्ट में ऐड हो जाएगा वो दूसरा इंफॉर्मेशन हमारे पास अवेलेबल नहीं है बट इट विल गो टू आवर बैलेंस शीट की जो एसेट का कॉस्ट होगा उसमें वैल्यू ऐड हो जाएगा 525. So this is the question what is asked that is how much we can capitalize it so we can capitalize 525. Is it fine everyone? सबको समझ में आ गया? Quickly?
next is say on 1st of january 2015 company began to construct a supermarket which has an estimated useful life of 40 years it purchased the site for 25 million construction uh, of the building cost is 9 million fixture and fix, uh, fitting cost is 6 million construction of the supermarket was completed in september 2015 and it was brought into use on 1st of january 2016 so company borrowed 40 million on 1st of january 2015 in order to finance this project loan was carried at 10% per annum and it was repaid on 30th of june 2016 so calculate the amount to be included in the cost of property plant and equipment in respect of development at december 2015 theek hai पहले तो इसको थोड़ा सा इजी कर देते फर्स्ट जनवरी 2015 कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्ट करते ऑफ बिल्डिंग बिल्डिंग का यूजफुल लाइफ है 40 इयर्स ये रेलेवेंट नहीं है यहां पे बोरिंग कॉस्ट के लिए इसके लिए कौन कौन से एक्सपेंस किए सो बिल्डिंग के कॉस्ट कौन कौन से एक तो सबसे पहले है साइट परचेस 25 मिलियन कंस्ट्रक्शन कॉस्ट 9 मिलियन फर्नीचर एंड फिक्सचर्स That is at six million. Okay, this is the cost. This is already incurred. Now for this, uh, this construction was completed on September two thousand. Two thousand fifteen. Sorry, September. So nine months is the period. So here they considered nine months also as a. substantial period of time so there is no clear cut criteria given for what is to be considered as substantial period of time into standards in future might be some clarification may come but as of now well it is in india we follow the practice if any asset has a qualifying asset is following more than 12 months then only we considered as the quali substantial period of time here they considered 9 months also as a for as what uh, say substantial period of time now into examination now if such kind of question is coming into multiple choice question then it is fine if we are asked that what find out the cost to be capitalized so then we have given the expense so we must see the see the book qualifying consider karke humne calculate karna hai lekin agar koi uh, descriptive question mein aisa kuch aata hai और जहां पे आपको लग रहा है कि इसका ट्रीटमेंट क्या देंगे नॉट इन एपर पेपर और किसी भी पेपर में जैसे यहाँ पे जैसे दो सीनारे हो सकते हैं यानी कि यहाँ पे क्वालिफाइंग पीरियड क्या कंसीडर करना है उसका कोई गाइडेंस नहीं है स्टैंडर्ड में सो so अगर आप अज्यूम करो अगर आप इसको सब्सटेंशियल पीरियड ऑफ टाइम कंसिडर नहीं करोगे तो कुछ कैपिटलाइज नहीं होगा <coughs> और सब्सटेंशियल पीरियड कंसिडर कर रहे हैं तो नाइन मंथ्स का कॉस्ट कैपिटलाइज होगा तो अगर कोई भी एग्जाम में ऐसा कोई सिनारियो आता है कि वेयर टू पॉसिबल डिफरेंट पॉसिबल आंसर्स आर पॉसिबल तो आपको पता नहीं कि एग्जामिनर क्या एंगल से पूछ रहा है कंफ्यूजन है सो जस्ट पुट योर अजम्पन नोट लगा दो कि मैंने ये अज्यूम किया है कि नाइन मंथ्स इज कंसीडर्ड एज अ सब्सटेंशियल पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड माई कैलकुलेशन आई हैन अकॉर्डिंग तो वो अजम्पन के बेस पे अगर आपका कैलकुलेशन सही है तो यू विल गेट मार्क्स बट ये अगर इन केस ऑफ एनी कंफ्यूजन ये नोट लगाना बहुत जरूरी है और नॉट ओनली फॉर एफ आर 
एरी सब्जेक्ट जहां पर भी ऐसा लग रहा है कि एफ हो गया कॉस्टिंग हो गया टैक्सेशन हो गया कि जहां पे टू डिफरेंट पॉसिबल सिचुएशन आर देयर एंड वी आर नॉट श्योर व्हाट टू डू जस्ट मेक अ नोट एंड देन स्टार्ट द कैलकुलेशन अकॉर्डिंगली ठीक है सो नाउ कंस्ट्रक्शन इज कंप्लीटेड ऑन सितंबर 2015 Loan was borrowed on first of January 2015, and this is for how much? It is 40 million. Rate of interest is 10 percent. So, what is the value of building as on 31st December? That is what we are being asked. <coughs> so, building में ये cost तो दिया हुआ है. 25 plus 9 plus 6. हमें सिर्फ फाइंड आउट करना है इंटरेस्ट कितना कैपिटलाइज करेंगे इंटरेस्ट ऐड करेंगे तो हमें टोटल कॉस्ट मिल जाएगा बिल्डिंग का तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ठीक है हमें तीन चीजें देखना है एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन असेट इज इन कर्ड बोरिंग कॉस्ट इन कर्ड एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन इज इन टू प्रोग्रेस तो फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी टू कंस्ट्रक्शन स्टार्टेड लोन भी बोरो किया है फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी को ही और मतलब तीनों कंडीशन फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी में सेटिस्फाई हो रहा है ठीक है कैपिटलाइज कब तक करेंगे अप टू सितंबर 2015 यानी कि जनवरी टू सितंबर नाइन मंथ ठीक है तो एनुअल इंटरेस्ट कितना हो गया हमारा 40 मिलियन इन टू टेन परसेंट आउट ऑफ विच ओनली नाइन मंथ इंटरेस्ट वी कैन कैपिटलाइज सो इट विल बी नाइन डिवाइडेड बाई 12, so 3 million we can capitalize. So what will be my cost of asset? So it will be this, all this thing, and borrowing cost. That is the total value of asset as on 31st December is 43. ये value हमारा बिल्डिंग का बैलेंस शीट में रहेगा दिस इज द कॉस्ट वी आर कैपिटलाइज टोटल एनुअल इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंस फोर तो चार में से एक एक लाख हम जाए हमारा होगा डेबिट स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस और थ्री हम कैपिटलाइज कर देंगे इनको एनी क्वेश्चन टू डू दिस इसमें कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो हमारा बोरिंग कॉस्ट खत्म हो गया तो सीधा सीधा नाइन मंथ का इंटरेस्ट कैलकुलेट किया वो हमने कैपिटलाइज कर दिया बाकी का प्रॉफिट और लॉस यस एनी वन एनी क्वेश्चन ऑल प्लीज क्विकली एक बार फटाफट कंफर्म कर दो आई एस ट्वेंटी थ्री इज फिनिश ना उसके अलावा आई एस ट्वेंटी थ्री में कुछ नहीं एवरीवन ओके सो दस आई एस फोर्टी इज डन आई एस ट्वेंटी थ्री इज डन नाउ Another part is okay. IS twenty, that is government grants and disclosure for the government assistance. Okay. So first of all, what we what is the government grant? So the uh benefits or incentives what uh, the industry received from the government government generally provide this grant and incentives or benefits to promote the trade into say a particular area promote the exports promote the manufacturing activities so government generally provides this kind of uh, different kind of grants and subsidies to the companies 
so how to account for this government grant now first of all basically we need to understand there are also very small standard so government grants now there are two types of government grants can be possible but before that let us understand what is a grant that is what is the definition of grant given by the standard so government of grants are the transfer of resources to an entity in return for the past or future compliance with certain conditions of course when of course if government is providing some benefit there are certain conditions attached to with it so either entity has complied with certain conditions into past or company is going to comply with the conditions into future but because of that company will get some transfer of resources from the government they exclude the assistance that cannot be valued a normal trade with the governments so if any assistance is provided which cannot be measured in terms of money or any trading with the government this will not be included into government grant otherwise everything will be included into grant whatever resources we are generating from the government say a kind of government grant means say a capital subsidy is provided by government So, say into industrial area. If company is establishing a manufacturing plant, so for that, government will provide some assistance. Say they will give a, a interest subsidy. They can provide so whatever interest expense. So if company has borrowed any funds and company is paying interest to banks, but for that bank, government will reimburse the some part of interest. That is called grant or say a transfer of resources by government or say company can uh, the government provide uh, the plot land to the companies into say uh, the industrial areas or say special economic zones at the subsidized rates so they can develop the factories so say uh, a manufacturing activity to promote the manufacturing activity to increase the uh, what we can say that is kya kehte hain usko to create jobs into that local area so there is some say rural area is there there is no manufacturing nothing yet the people over there do not have any jobs to promote this to so, so the people of there the rural area can get some activity they can have some their livelihood they can get employment employment activities to generate employment <coughs> government provides a land at subsidized rates or say government reimburses the salary cost of the employees to company so that is all called as my government grant government means any government or government agency or similar bodies like local national or international so might be it can be from state government or it can be from central government or say it can be from say normal uh, municipal corporation or any government body government assistance means a government action which is designed to provide an economic benefit to specific entity it does not include indirect help such as infrastructure development so say any assistance which is designed to provide economic benefit to specific entity but there is no rules there is some specific assistance which cannot be measured in terms of money that what is the value of assistance that government is providing so then it will be considered as an assistance infrastructure development help is not considered here so now if any entity is receiving a government grant 
so then how to account first of all first question is can we recognize this into books of account or not or when to recognize so grant should not be recognized until the condition for receipt have been complied with and there is a reasonable assurance that grant will be received now two conditions to recognize it into books of account first one is that yes whatever conditions attached with the grant are complied with so when conditions are complied with and there is a reasonable assurance that the grant will be received that means a formal communication or formal letter from the government is received that yes now entity has complied with the conditions attached with the grant and now government is going to release x amount of grant grant to the entity so both this conditions must be satisfied then only grant can be recognized into books of account now here there are two types of grant one is income grant which can also can be said revenue grant and second one is called asset related grant or we can say a capital grant so what is happening into say a income related grant so income related grant means say a uh, benefit provided say for example uh, into say some rural area government is saying to company that you start your factory over there and you provide employment to the local people of that area and whatever salary cost that company will incur that cost will be reimbursed by the government so that is called my income related grant that is companies expensing uh, doing the expense on salary that same that will they will get reimbursement from the government so grant is received for the reimbursement of salary cost salary where we charge into statement of profit or loss account so any grant which is received for this revenue purpose it should be credited into statement of प्रॉफिट और लॉस यहां पे दो ऑप्शन तो या तो स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस में इनकम रिकॉर्ड करेंगे या तो हमारा जो सैलरी कॉस्ट होगा उससे माइनस कर देंगे सो एनीवे ट्रीटमेंट इज गोइंग टू सेम सो कॉस्ट से माइनस किया तो भी जीरो हो जाएगा एक साइड डेबिट किया एक साइड क्रेडिट किया तो भी इफेक्ट जीरो हो सो बोथ कैन बी पॉसिबल दैट इज आइदर रिकॉर्डेड एज अ रेवेन्यू और डिडक्ट from the cost dusra hota hai asset related grant so asset related grant mein yani ki jab agar koi uh, machinery ya koi other long term asset purchase karne ke liye government ne grant diya so that is called capital grant so capital grant ka treatment kya hoga usme bhi do option तो से फॉर एग्जांपल एक हम मशीनरी परचेस कर रहे हैं वो मशीनरी यूज करके हम वी आर डूइंग सम एक्सपोर्ट्स ठीक है तो वो मशीनरी परचेस के लिए करने के लिए गवर्नमेंट ने ग्रांट दिया तो से फॉर एग्जांपल वो मशीनरी का कॉस्ट है 50 लाख और हमें 20 लाख का ग्रांट मिला गवर्नमेंट से कि चलो ठीक है आप ये मशीनरी परचेस करके आप एक्सपोर्ट करोगे यू विल जनरेट फॉरेन एक्सचेंज फॉर द कंट्री सो वी विल प्रोवाइड यू फॉर दिस वी विल प्रोवाइड 20 लाख ऑफ ग्रांट तो अब ये 20 लाख का अकाउंटिंग कैसे होगा इसका दो ऑप्शन ऑप्शन नंबर वन पहला तो हम क्या करेंगे वी विल डिडक्ट दिस 20 लाख फ्रॉम दी कॉस्ट ऑफ असेट तो कॉस्ट ऑफ असेट कितना है 50 लाख 50 माइनस ट्वेंटी कर दिया 30 लाख 30 लाख से ही हम असेट रिकॉर्ड करेंगे और 30 लाख को डेप्रीशिएट करेंगे ओवर द यूजफुल लाइफ वाले फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर दस साल दस साल का लाइफ है मशीनरी का तो थर्टी लैक्स को दस साल में डेप्रीशिएट करेंगे ये हो गया ऑप्शन नंबर वन यानी कि हमने असेट का कॉस्ट ही घटा दिया असेट का कॉस्ट घट गया तो उसके हिसाब से डेप्रिसिएशन भी कम जाएगा पचास सो वो हमारा 
ग्रांट का इफेक्ट आ गया हमारा नेट कॉस्ट पे उस केस में सिर्फ 30 लाख है तो 30 लाख पे ही हम डेप्रिशिएशन प्रोवाइड करेंगे दूसरा ऑप्शन है रिकॉर्ड दिस ग्रांट एज अ डेफर्ड इनकम एंड रिलीज टू प्रॉफिट और लॉस ओवर द लाइफ ऑफ असेट यानी कि हम वी विल रिकॉर्ड द असेट विद फुल 50 लाख and we will record the grant as deferred income on liability side of the balance sheet so liability side mein under liability hum kya karenge deferred grant to ek side hamara balance sheet mein asset side hai 50 lakh ka asset aur liability side hai 20 lakh ka deferred income yani ki grant so net asset ka kitna ho gaya aap yahan pe net value ho gaya 30 lakh अच्छा अभी हम क्या करेंगे अभी ये असेट का वैल्यू है फॉर एग्जांपल लाइफ है दस साल का लाइफ तो हम पचास लाख का असेट है उसको दस साल में डेप्रिशिएट करेंगे सो फिफ्टी डिवाइडेड बाय टेन तो एवरी ईयर क्या हो जाएगा पांच लाख हमारा डेप्रिशिएशन पे लेकिन साथ साथ में क्या करेंगे हम एवरी ईयर वो ग्रांट से भी क्या करेंगे ग्रांट को भी दस से डिवाइड करेंगे ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाई टेन तो एवरी ईयर टू लैक्स विल बी ट्रांसफर टू प्रॉफिट और लॉस अकाउंट एज एन इनकम डेप्रिशिएशन क्या होगा डेबिट होगा उसके सामने ग्रांट क्या होगा क्रेडिट हो गया सो नेट कॉस्ट कितना हो गया फाइव माइनस टू दैट इज थ्री और फर्स्ट ऑप्शन में क्या हो रहा था हमने पहले से ही फिफ्टी माइनस ट्वेंटी कर दिया सो थर्टी पे डेप्रिशिएशन गया थ्री सो दोनों केस में ऑप्शन क्या आ गया दैट इज थ्री तो ये हो गया ग्रांट का अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट सर यस कैन यू एक्सप्लेन अगेन इनकम रिलेटेड ग्रांट थोड़ा सा लाउड नहीं बोला मुझे नहीं समझ आ रहा कैन यू कैन यू रिपीट दैट इनकम रिलेटेड ग्रांट इनकम रिलेटेड ग्रांट मींस ग्रांट व्हिच इज से फॉर एग्जांपल व्हिच इज नॉट फॉर द परचेस ऑफ एनी कैपिटल एसेट तो से फॉर एग्जांपल अ कंपनी इज गवर्नमेंट इज आस्किंग अ कंपनी टू सेट अप अ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्लांट इन टू रूरल एरिया just to provide employment for the uh, people of that rural area so government kya bol rahi hai ki aap yahan pe factory establish karo aap yahan ke local logo ko employment provide karo unka jo bhi salary cost hoga hum aapko reimburse karte hain so wo ho gaya hamara income related grant abhi usme bhi do option hai abhi kya one off grant hai ya fir wo matlab ek saal ke liye grant hai ya ek saal se zyada period ke liye तो अगर सिर्फ सिंगल ईयर के लिए ग्रांट है मतलब एक ही साल का एक्सपेंस है उसी के सामने हमें रिमबर्समेंट में वाला है तो एक्सपेंस हो जाएगा हमारा डेबिट साइड में उसके सामने क्रेडिट साइड में हम ग्रांट रिकॉर्ड कर लेंगे लेकिन यहाँ पे गवर्नमेंट ने ऐसा बोला कि चलो हम आपको तीन साल का कॉस्ट होगा ना वो हम आपको रिमबर्स करके देंगे एक अमाउंट फिक्स कर दिया कि तीन एवरी ईयर हम आपको फॉर एग्जाम्पल पंद्रह पंद्रह लाख का रिमबर्समेंट देंगे तो हमको पता है कि हमको सैलरी कॉस्ट भी पंद्रह लाख के हिसाब से करना है लेकिन हमने फोर्टी फाइव लैक्स हमको एडवांस में मिल गया तो फोर्टी फाइव लैक्स का हम क्या ट्रीटमेंट करेंगे जब हमको रिसीव होगा तो अगेन इट विल बी रिकॉर्डेड एज अ डेफर्ड ग्रांट फोर्टी फाइव लैक्स को हम डेफर्ड ग्रांट लाइबिलिटी साइड रिकॉर्ड करेंगे फिर फर्स्ट ईयर का सैलरी एक्सपेंस हमने रिकॉर्ड किया तो फोर्टी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री को पंद्रह लाख को प्रॉफिट लॉस में ट्रांसफर कर दो तो या तो हम वो सैलरी कॉस्ट से माइनस करेंगे या तो इनकम साइज रिकॉर्ड करेंगे दो में से कोई भी ऑप्शन चूज कर सकते हैं सेकेंड ईयर अगेन दूसरे साल का सैलरी कॉस्ट इंटर किया तो अगेन पंद्रह ट्रांसफर करो तो ऐसे वो उसको तीन साल में अमोटेक्स करेंगे दैट इज डेफर और इनकम रिलेटेड और कैपिटल ग्रांट यानी कि अगर कोई कैपिटल असेट परचेज करने के लिए ग्रांट किया है तो दैट इज कैपिटल sir hmm. sir uh, if we are purchasing any capital asset then uh, how is it going to benefit uh, to the government how is going to benefit whom to government na no? uh, that's why they are giving us ha so as i said say uh, entity is a into business of say exports so say company is manufacturing some product and they are Doing export of the same. So export से क्या होगा? Foreign remittance आएगा RBI के पास. 
तो उससे गवर्नमेंट को बेनिफिट होगा तो इसके लिए बोले कि वो एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोट करने के लिए आप मशीन परचेज करने के लिए गवर्नमेंट ग्रांट देती है ओके सो दैट दे कैन मैन्युफैक्चर मोर स्पेसिफिकली फॉर एक्सपोर्ट नॉट नेसेसरी नॉट नेसेसरी स्पेसिफिकली फॉर एक्सपोर्ट नॉर्मल भी अगर कोई अभी मेक इन इंडिया चल रहा है तो मेक इन इंडिया में भी अगर चलो जो भी चलो अभी स्मार्टफोन देख लो तो ज्यादातर बाहर जा रहे हैं यहाँ पे वी डू नॉट है क्वालिटी फोन इन इंडिया सो क्वालिटी फोन का मैन्युफैक्चर प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाने के लिए अगर जो कुछ स्पेसिफिक मशीनरी बाहर से इम्पोर्ट भी करना पड़ रहा है या फिर यहाँ पे लोकली बनाने के लिए भी अगर पैसा चाहिए तो गवर्नमेंट को क्या करना है मेक इन इंडिया प्रमोट करना है तो वो ग्रांट प्रोवाइड करेंगे अभी ये तो हो गया ग्रांट का अकाउंटिंग जब मिलेगा तब रीपेमेंट होगा तो क्या हो यानी कि अगर अगर कुछ कंडीशन है कंडीशन सेटिस्फाई हो रहा है तो ग्रांट मिल रहा लेकिन ग्रांट मिल गया उसके बाद कंपनी ने कोई कंडीशन वायोलेट किया तो इन दैट केस कंपनी को पूरा का पूरा ग्रांट रिटर्न करना पूरा का पूरा ग्रांट रिटर्न करेंगे तो उसका अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट क्या होगा अच्छा इसको अभी स्टेप बाय स्टेप करते हैं सबसे पहले बात करते हैं इनकम ग्रांट की सो इनकम ग्रांट में अगर वन ईयर का ग्रांट है तो उसमें कोई रीपेमेंट का क्वेश्चन आएगा नहीं क्योंकि एक्सपेंस हो गया ग्रांट मिल गया कंडीशन वहीं पर सेटिस्फाई हो गया लेकिन अगर तीन साल का ग्रांट दिया हुआ है फॉर एग्जाम्पल कि रूरल एरिया में आप एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेट करो लेकिन उसमें कंडीशन है कि आप तीन साल में यू के नॉट रिमूव एनी एम्प्लॉय फ्रॉम दी जॉब तो ही ग्रांट मिलेगा ठीक है थर्टी लैक्स का ग्रांट है फॉर एग्जांपल तो एवरी ईयर दस साल दस 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 लाख का एग्जांपल करके थर्टी लैक्स का ग्रांट मिला है तो इन द ईयर ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर के हिसाब से थर्टी लैक्स का ग्रांट मिल गया से टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी तीन साल के लिए ग्रांट मिला 2018 के बिगिनिंग बिगिनिंग में ग्रांट मिल गया सो फर्स्ट जनवरी को ग्रांट आया तो कंपनी ने इसको रिकॉर्ड कर लिया एज अ डेफर्ड इनकम फिर 2018 एंड हुआ 2018 में कोई कंडीशन वायलेट नहीं हुआ 2018 का जो सैलरी कॉस्ट था तो टू दी एक्सटेंट हमने 10 लाख ट्रांसफर कर दिया प्रॉफिट बस में तो फर्स्ट ईयर का हिसाब हिसाब खत्म अभी सेकेंड ईयर में कंडीशन वायलेट हुआ सेकेंड ईयर में कंपनी ने कुछ एम्प्लॉयज को निकाल दिया तो ये कंडीशन वायलेट हो गया नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस कंपनी नीड्स टू रीपे फुल थर्टी लैक्स तो अच्छा तो पहले तो अभी देखो सेकेंड ईयर के सेकेंड ईयर में बुक्स में क्या देखेगा हमारे एक तो डेफर्ड ग्रांट में कितना बैलेंस बचा होगा ट्वेंटी लैक्स जो हमें ट्वेंटी अभी हमने यूटिलाइज नहीं किया so, पहले तो ये ट्वेंटी लैक्स का जो डेफर्ड पेमेंट है वो हमें जीरो करना है मतलब हमें तो पूरा पेमेंट करना है थर्टी लैक्स तो हमें गवर्नमेंट से मिला है तो एक तो मतलब हमारे बैंक से बैंक क्रेडिट होने वाला है थर्टी लैक्स डेबिट क्या होगा तो डेफर्ड ग्रांट का बैलेंस क्या होता है क्रेडिट बैलेंस होता है वो हमारे लाइबिलिटी साइड होता है तो थर्टी का मिला था उसमें से फर्स्ट ईयर का हमने बेनिफिट ले लिया तो अभी बैलेंस बचा था ट्वेंटी लैक्स तो पहले तो वो ट्वेंटी को रिवर्स कर दो तो ट्वेंटी डेबिट हो गया बाकी का बचा दस दस का हमने क्या किया था इनकम रिकॉर्ड किया था क्या एक्सपेंस कम किया था जो भी किया था प्रॉफिट लॉस में क्रेडिट किया था उसको डेबिट कर दो तो दस लाख प्रॉफिट लॉस डेबिट कर दो मतलब जो हमने प्रीवियसली अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट दिया है उसको रिवर्स कर दो सो फर्स्ट ईयर में क्या किया था हमने टेन लैक्स क्रेडिट किया था प्रॉफिट और लॉस अकाउंट में तो वो टेन लैक्स को प्रॉफिट लॉस में अगेन अभी डेबिट कर दो आपको कोई बेनिफिट नहीं मिल है और जो अभी डेफर्ड ग्रांट में पड़ा है ट्वेंटी लैक्स वो आपको रिटर्न कर दो सो प्रॉफिट और लॉस डेबिट टेन लैक्स डेफर्ड इनकम डेबिट ट्वेंटी लैक्स टू बैंक अकाउंट क्रेडिट थर्टी लैक्स तो ये हो गया एक रीपेमेंट का कंडीशन कि जो हमने पहले किया है उसको रिवर्स कर दो सो फर्स्ट ईयर में हमने प्रॉफिट लॉस में बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर किया था तो वो बेनिफिट को रिवर्स कर दो और अभी जो लाइबिलिटी साइड बैलेंस पड़ा है उसको जीरो करके उसको भी रिवर्स कर दो तो ये हो गया डेफर्ड ग्रांट का रिवर्स अभी बात करते हैं कैपिटल बेस ग्रांट की सो कैपिटल ग्रांट में भी अगर हमने ग्रांट को कंसीडर किया है एज अ डेफर्ड इनकम तो सेम ट्रीटमेंट रहेगा क्योंकि डेफर्ड ग्रांट में क्या करते हैं वी विल रिकॉर्ड दी असेट विथ फुल वैल्यू 
और डेफर्ड ग्रांट रिकॉर्ड करेंगे तो उसमें सेम ट्रीटमेंट जितना हमने प्रॉफिट लॉस में ट्रांसफर किया है उतना रिवर्स कर दो और जो बैलेंस पड़ा है उसको जीरो कर दो कंडीशन कहा था कि जब भी हमने इन केस ऑफ कैपिटल ग्रांट हमने रिकॉर्ड किया है एज अ डिडक्शन फ्रॉम कैपिटल यानी कि 50 लाख का मशीनरी था हमने 20 लाख डिडक्ट करके दिया so 30 लाख था 30 लाख को हमने एक साल का डिप्रीशिएशन भी प्रोवाइड कर दिया तो अभी इसका रिवर्सल कैसे करें तो सबसे पहले तो हमें पूरा का पूरा 20 लाख का रिपेमेंट तो करना है तो हम क्या करेंगे वापस से स्टार्टिंग से कैलकुलेशन करेंगे एज इफ की हमें 50 लाख का कोई ग्रांट मिला ही नहीं तो हम कैलकुलेट करेंगे अगर 50 लाख पे ग्रांट नहीं होता तो आज के दिन पे वैल्यू कितना होता है असेट का जो 10 साल का लाइफ है तो 50 डिवाइडेड बाय 10 इयर्स तो 5 लाख का डेप्रिसिएशन होता है फर्स्ट ईयर के एंड में उसका कैरिंग अमाउंट होता है 45 लाख हमने क्या किया ग्रांट मिला ग्रांट मिला तो हमने असेट की कॉस्ट से माइनस किया था तो थर्टी का था थर्टी माइनस थ्री किया तो ट्वेंटी सेवन कैरी का अमाउंट तो अभी हमें क्या करना पड़ेगा असेट का वैल्यू इंक्रीज करना पड़ेगा फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सेवन टू फोर्टी फाइव और वो कहाँ पे डाल देंगे हम असेट का वैल्यू इंक्रीज हो जाएगा सो असेट अकाउंट डेबिट टू बैंक अकाउंट क्रेडिट ठीक है जो ट्रीटमेंट प्रोवाइड किया उसको रिवर्स कर so we need to see ki if there was no grant received from the government then what would be the balance so balance would be 45 right now balance is 27 or what depreciation can be so pura 20 reverse karna hai so that is what we are going to reverse so humko pehle pura reverse calculation karna padega asset ke liye question we will see into next class About this reversal, but अभी concept समझ Deferred grant है तो liability side जो balance पड़ा है उसको reverse कर दो profit loss में जो charge किया है उसको वापस debit कर दो Asset से minus किया है तो asset का value पहले increase कर दो और जो पूरा bank से repayment हो जाएगा और remaining जो amount आएगा depreciation वो उसको profit loss में charge कर यानी कि यहाँ पे क्या होगा अगर सीधा सीधा बोलू 50 लाख का मशीन है हमने 20 लाख का ग्रांट मिला था हमने एक साल का डेप्रीसिएशन प्रोवाइड किया तो हमने 50 माइनस ट्वेंटी किया 30 30 पे हमने एक साल का डेप्रीसिएशन प्रोवाइड किया 3 लाख सो अभी हमारा वैल्यू दिख रहा है 27 अभी हमने कंडीशन वायोलेट किया अभी हमको रीपेमेंट करना है पूरा का पूरा ग्रांट तो अभी हमें क्या करना है कि जो पहले वो 50 माइनस ट्वेंटी किया था अभी वो वैल्यू को 50 करना पड़ेगा तो अगर ये 20 का ग्रांट मिला नहीं होता तो वैल्यू कितना होता 50 माइनस फाइव अभी होता 45। तो पहले तो हमें असेट का वैल्यू कितना करना है असेट का वैल्यू दिख रहा है 27। होना कितना चाहिए 45। तो so कितना इंक्रीज करना है कितना होगा ट्वेंटी से फोर्टी फाइव हो गया सॉरी एटीन या सेवेंटीन 18 हो गया तो वैल्यू असेट का 18 इंक्रीज हो जाएगा अच्छा अभी ये ग्रांट मिला उसकी वजह से हमने क्या किया था डेप्रीशिएशन हमने प्रोवाइड किया था सिर्फ थ्री अगर ग्रांट नहीं होता तो हम कितना डेप्रीशिएशन प्रोवाइड करते फाइव तो ये दो का जो एडिशनल डेप्री उसमें डाल दो प्रॉफिट लॉस अकाउंट में तो प्रॉफिट लॉस अकाउंट डेबिट टू फिर असेट अकाउंट डेबिट एटीन टू बैंक अकाउंट क्रेडिट तो ये हो गया उसका पूरा रिवर्सल और उसके बाद में गवर्नमेंट असिस्टेंस तो एस इंप्लाइड इन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट असिस्टेंस हेल्प बिजनेस थ्रू लोन गारंटीज लोन एट लो रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट और एडवाइस प्रोक्योरमेंट पॉलिसी और सिमिलर मेथड सो इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू प्लेस रिलायबल वैल्यूज ऑन दिस फॉर्म ऑफ असिस्टेंस सो दे आर नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज 
तो अभी जैसे लोन मॉरिटोरियम पीरियड चल रहा है तो उसमें लोन मॉरिटोरियम में क्या हो रहा है बिकॉज ऑफ दिस कोविड ने तो कुछ जो एड मॉरिटोरियम में जो लोन के लिए अप्लाई कर रहे तो उसमें गारंटी कौन दे रहा है कुछ इसमें गवर्नमेंट इज प्रोवाइडिंग गारंटी लेकिन उसको आप मेजर कैसे करेंगे वो रिलायबली मेजर नहीं कर सकते सो दैट इज कॉल्ड गवर्नमेंट असिस्टेंस सो उसको हमें बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट में रिकॉर्ड नहीं करना और लास्ट में डिस्क्लोजर अबाउट द स्टैंडर्ड सो हमें चाहिए कि हमें कौन सा ग्रांट मिला है इनकम रिलेटेड ग्रांट है तो उसका डिस्क्लोजर दो कैपिटल ग्रांट है तो उसके कंडीशन क्या थे और किस वजह से हमें कितना ग्रांट मिला है उसका अकाउंट ट्रीटमेंट हमने क्या किया है कॉस्ट से डिडक्ट किया है या एज अ डेफिनेट इनकम रिकॉर्ड किया है अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसी क्या फॉलो किया है कौन सा गाय तो दिस इज ऑल यस सो व्हाट इज द अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसी बी फॉलोड व्हाट इज द नेचर ऑफ ग्रांट हमारे फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट हमने कहां पे रिकॉर्ड किया है एंड ऑल दिस डिस्क्लोजर्स आर रिक्वायर्ड ठीक है सो अभी के लिए इतना टुमारो मॉर्निंग विल सी दी प्रैक्टिकल क्वेश्चंस ऑन दी गवर्नमेंट दैट बट अप टिल नाउ एनी क्वेश्चंस एनीवन ऑन टू ग्रांट और एनीथिंग हमने जो बोरिंग कॉस्ट या इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी किया उसमें किसी को कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो वी कैन प्रोबेबली एंड टूडे सेशन एंड विल आई सी यू ऑल टुमारो मॉर्निंग एट एम क्या फाइन थैंक यू बाय फाइन फाइन थैंक यू सो मच गाइस थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग गुड नाइट गुड नाइट गाइस सी यू ऑल टुमारो एट एम शार्प